Hi, welcome to Mike's Computer Tips. In this video, I'm going to show you five simple ways that you can speed up Windows. Alright, let's get straight to it. First thing to do is go to mikescomputertips.com and from here, simply search for five tweaks to speed up Windows. Is. It's actually named slightly different, but uh, there it is nonetheless. Okay, and like all the other tips and tutorials on Mike's Computer Tips, you can get the detailed PDF that will walk you through all the steps you need. Okay, and here it is. This one's a bit of a longer one, but stay with me and I'll do my best to walk you through it. Okay, the first thing we can do is we can actually use Windows 7 Ready Boost. Now this is a feature that allows you to use any flash drives that you may have plugged into your computer as extra cache. So you can essentially, uh, flash drives can act as memory to, if you have low RAM or anything like that, you'll be able to run more, com uh, more programs without slowing your computer down. Okay, and I'll show you how to do that. First of all, step one is to go into my computer. So here we are at my computer. And all we need to do is right click on the flash drive, which is under devices with removable storage. And in this case, mine is called Lexar. And we right click on that, go to properties. And from the properties menu, we go to the Ready Boost tab. And from here, what you can do is there's a few options. You can either choose not to use the device, you can dedicate the device's entire um, storage to Ready Boost, or you can simply select Use Device and customize the amount of um, memory you want to use as storage. This is handy if you've got a device that, say, has 5 gigs of space as opposed to the 2 gig drive that I've got here. Uh, if you've got, say, 5 gigs of space but half of that you have music or videos or something then that way you can go in here and specify only half of it will be used for ready boost but in this case I've got an empty Lexar drive so we're just going to go ahead and click on dedicate device to ready boost hit apply and in a moment this will be done there we go and you can see now it's already using 5 megs of the drive as I do uh, tasks and um, use my computer more, this will be used up. But as you can see, it's now um, being listed as full. So the next step, we'll just go back to our handy PDF. Okay, the next thing to do is we will go into uh, MS Config, and you get to that by clicking your Start button and then typing in MS config. So I'm going to hit the start button. You won't be able to see it, but I'm just typing in MS config into the search bar down the bottom as pictured right here. And just like in the picture, the little MS config app pops up. And you simply click on this app up here. And after a moment, it will load. There it is. Okay. And what you want to do is, from this menu here, no, normally Windows will have just normal startup selected. And ba basically that'll start all of your startup and services. And we're going to customize those to increase how quickly the computer starts up and get rid of some of the background uh, uh, programs that might be running, even if we don't really want or need them to be running. But what you want to do is you want to click on Selective Startup. And at the moment, these squares indicate that I have some uh, startup items selected and some unselected, and the same with my services. So as you can see on, over here on, in the example, uh, it has a tick, which means uh, all of the um, system services and startup items have been selected. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead as indicated in the PDF and go to startup. As you can see, 
I've got a whole bunch of uh, startup items that I currently have deselected. And in the example, you can see that that's more like what you're going to see the first time you go into this, is that everything's starting up. And every single one of those programs runs when you start the computer. So as you can imagine, loading all of those different programs up would definitely take a bit of time. So what you can go ahead and do is you can click Disable All, and that will mean that none of these programs will start. Or you can go through and selectively choose which ones you want to start and which ones you don't. For example, if you've got virus software or um, in my case I've got um, software for my mouse or software for um, removing spyware and Skype, things like that. Things that you want that you know you need in your startup, you just leave them there. And the next step will be to go into services. And services uh, run all sorts of things in the background of your computer that aren't necessarily apps, but um, they can be things like this Adobe Flash Player update service. Basically, that just means that a tiny, a tiny little app runs in the background um, monitoring what version of Flash you have. And if a later version comes out, it just uh, starts another app that tells you you need to update. Uh, but what you can do here, hide all Microsoft services, because the Microsoft services are generally pretty important. They control everything from your networking to your sound to video. So you really don't want to touch any of those because they're all pretty much um, needed to run Windows properly. But then as you can see, as soon as I deselect that, I've got a whole bunch of different things that aren't actually selected already. So I've gone ahead and I've already manually removed a bunch of these. Now these services can be a little bit more confusing than the startup items. So it can be quite handy if you want to go through and arrange it by manufacturer. So that way you can go through and select only um, items from uh, trusted manufacturers. For example, I've got a few here. Uh, these mineral ray satellites there from uh, 3D Max. They come up as unknown, but I know they're they're okay. But I don't actually use Mental Ray that part of 3D Max, so I've got those deselected anyway. Whereas we've got other ones here from some other apps that I've gotten, and I don't really want those running in my backgrounds. That's uh, for security as opposed to performance. But from a performance standpoint, there's a few of these that I could definitely remove. But for now, I'll leave them, and it's up to you to go through and selectively remove the ones that you don't want that may be slowing your computer down. Alternatively. You can just uns unselect them all, and then as you need more things, just go ahead and uh, re-enable them if you find you're missing something. Okay, and once you change any of those, it will prompt you asking you if you want to restart your computer or exit without a restart. Restarting will simply, as it suggests, restart the computer with the changes applied. If you exit without restart, that means the next time you do restart, it will apply those changes and disable those services and startup items. Okay, next up, we are going to uh, reduce the visual uh, quality of Windows to increase performance. And this is a pretty um, customizable area as well, and you simply want to, uh, you won't be able to see me doing it, but um, I'm hitting the start button hovering over my computer, you might be able to see it, right clicking, pushing properties, and we're coming into the computer settings here, there we go, and as you can see down here we will go to change settings, now my little window pops up, and we want to go to advanced, or the advanced tab, and on performance click settings up the top there. Okay and the first tab that comes up is visual effects and as you can see up the top here we'll just go through on the PDF you can see that by default let Windows choose what's best for my computer is selected but what you want to do is you want to click on the adjust for best performance button so we'll go ahead and do that and as you can see it uh, unchecks all of these boxes and they're just all the different visual effects that um, Windows performs. For example when I hit OK you're going to see my fancy transparent aerial theme disappear. Now this may take a moment and there we go. As you can see Windows has gone to a very very simple 
uh, cut back version, but the amount of memory, both video and system memory, that will be used will be cut down greatly. So we'll go ahead and click OK on that. Click OK on that. And the next step is we're going to load up the uh, disk tools. So for that, there's a couple ways we can go into it. We can either type in disk cleanup. So click start and at the bottom of the search results you can type in disk cleanup. Which will bring it up. There we go. Or click start, go to click on all programs, click accessories, and then there will be system tools and it'll be under system tools but as you can't see my start menu we're just going to go ahead and type in this cleanup as is suggested in the PDF so there we go so scroll down and we'll click OK on C drive OK and here it is it's calculated everything that can be deleted or removed and you can then go ahead and select what you want to get rid of to uh, clean out any of the old temporary or junk files that you may have on the computer. Okay, next step is the disk defragmenter. So we're going to hit cancel on that for now and just hit start again in the search bar at the bottom click in disk, sorry type in disk defrag and then the uh, Disk defragmenter will appear. Simply click on that, as is stated in the PDF here. And here's the disk defragmenter tool. Uh, from here, you can choose which drive you want to uh, defragment, and as you can see, it will tell you the percentage of the files on the drive that are actually fragmented. And the more fragmented they, uh, the files are on the drive, the slower it will run. So it's a very good idea to schedule defragmentation tasks uh, either monthly, bi-monthly, uh, somewhere around there because generally as you use the computer hard drives will get fragmented. And um, you can also run a task manually where you can simply click analyze disk and that will give you a detailed readout of the files that are fragmented on your computer and um, then allow you to defragment the actual disk. Uh, worth noting is that um, if you have a solid state drive or an SSD uh, they can't actually be defragmented because they are just like flash memory where there's no physical um, position that is uh, that the data is on the disk, so there's no point to uh, sorry into defragmenting the disk. Um, in fact, some older SSDs could actually be uh, ruined by running uh, the disk def defragmenter on them. So yeah, just watch out for that. Okay, and the next step, the final step, in fact, is we're going to disable the Windows 7 search, and to do that, simply click on your Start menu go to the search uh, window at the bottom and type in services.msc and then just click on the icon at the top uh, right there okay there it is alright we'll scroll down and what you want to do is you just want to find the service so we'll click here we'll type W hit W and that will take us down to the services known as, oh, named Windows and you just want to scroll down until you find Windows search there it is and you just want to hit the stop button on that and that stops that service from running and that way um, you can uh, help speed up the computer just that little bit more and look at that we're done so there you go. I hope uh, you stuck around with me the whole way and are able to do this and get a nice uh, performance gain out of your Windows 7. And just remember, for all your uh, Mac and PC related tips and tutorials, don't forget to head over to Mike's Computer Tips. Alright, see you later.